All right, I'm joined here by uh, Kelly, the ghost of uh, Pavlik, former uh, WBC middleweight champion of the world. How are you doing, Kelly? Doing very good. Very All right, good. how's training camp in Oxnard going for you? It's going really good right now. Um, we're enjoying it. Uh, I feel great. Uh, you know, everything's coming back. Uh, I feel sharp. My hand speed's coming. Um, conditioning's fantastic. And, you know, every every day and every week, we're just getting sharper and sharper. Uh, what, what are the biggest changes that you're seeing coming out here in this new kind of environment? You know, you just said it, uh, it's the environment. I'm able to just concentrate all on boxing now, you know, no distractions or anything like that. Um, I'm able to focus on what I want to focus on, and training's been going uh, phenomenal. Uh, you know, my hand speed feels great again. You know, power to snap on the punches is coming back. So, I mean, everything's starting to click now. All right, excellent. You have a fight coming up March 31st. Uh, do you know anything about your opponent? Uh, have you kind of studied him or kind of no, know you what know, he's about? We, we just got the name yesterday on the opponent, um, Aaron Jaco. I seen some of the stuff on Box Rec. Uh, he's 15 and two with five knockouts. Uh, you know, I think this week though, that we found out, we're gonna start getting to film him, and we'll start breaking down film and everything else on him. Right. But a little too early to tell, you know, exactly right now. And so, you don't want to just go off his record of who he fought because, right. you know, sometimes it's dangerous. So you're kind of looking at this as a getting ready fight, you know, to get for the bigger names kind of thing, or I don't like calling it that, but you know, I <laughs> guess that's what what they could call it. Right, um, right. You know, just get back in, get my, uh, get the rust off and everything else, right. and. You know, kid's 15 and 2, so I mean, he's, he's not a pushover. He's obviously, exactly. um, he, he always knows how to win. So, and I think after that, we want to stay busy. You know, we're going to go um, early June after this one, and then we're going to go, you know, September. And hopefully, you know, September might be a, a big one or, or, or a very meaningful fight. Right, and, and in September, what what kind of names are you looking to get in the ring at that time? You know, that's up to uh, promoters and agents. I know we mentioned it. Um, some names are being tossed around. There's a bunch of them from 68 to 60. You know, there was uh, Chavez, Martinez, and Frosch, guys like that. But, you know, right now we just got to see what happens. So you think at this stage of your career you'll still be able to hit 160 comfortably, or would that be a struggle for you? Realistically, I'm not thinking so. But, um, you know, we're going to see with this fight how, hard, how easy it is to get down to 68. Um, you know, our weight right now is pretty good. Uh, you know, Cecilio, my nutritionist and personal trainer, has been working with me pretty good. So we'll see. If we get down 68 fairly easy without no problems, then maybe 68 is not out of question, or 60 is out of question. All right, and you're obviously here to support uh, Brandon Rios, your stable mate. Yep, yep. What are your thoughts on the situation going on with Gamboa and you know, in your perspective? Uh, it's a messed up situation. I, I feel bad for Brandon. I mean, you know, he's, he has his mindset on this fight. It's a big fight. It's one of the bigger fights in boxing right now. And it's hard, you know. You don't know if the fight's going to happen, if it's not going to happen. And then if it don't happen, you know, yeah, you're still going to go on on the 14th. But you know, you, the whole mental preparation has changed. So I, I feel bad for him. But, you know, he's a strong-minded kid, and I'm sure he'll be able to get past that part. Uh, hopefully for the fans, the fight does happen. And uh, if it does happen... Uh... How do you see that fight turning out, considering Gambo is a smaller man? I think it, I think it's a great fight, and I think that's going to be the advantage though, for Brandon. I think, first of all, with Brandon's style, it is, um, you know, just um, constant. You know, he keeps putting the pressure on, he can hit, he's got uh, good hand speed, and plus his uh, size advantage is going to be another thing. So I see it being an interesting fight, you know, for a couple of rounds, but I just think towards the middle and late rounds, I think Brandon's going to be a little too much for him. Uh, interesting fight coming up in a week, uh, Martinez, Macklin. You obviously have experience with Martinez. Uh, how do you see that fight going? Or I think Martinez should win. I, I, I really shouldn't come out and say anything on it, like tactic-wise, because I have never seen Macklin fight, so I don't know exactly what he brings to the table. I heard that he's a, a pretty strong fighter, and you know, in an European style, so, which is awkward. So it could be a little frustrating, but I think with the experience and everything else that uh, Martinez has, that he should do pretty good. And is that a guy you would like to fight again in the future to kind of get revenge? Definitely. You yes. definitely want him. So it'll be a totally different situation this time. You know, we right. do we make the right decisions uh, weight wise and everything else. Uh, we won't put ourselves through what we did last time. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Kelly, on the Boxing Circle. You have uh, good luck on your next fight on March thank 31st. You. Thank you.